All right. Good morning, good afternoon, depending where you are. I'm radio and TV personality Rob Pagetto. I'm in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, where it's uh, a beautiful 13 degrees. We're getting warmer, and that's Celsius for all of our Fahrenheit people. And uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I got to say this. Um, Toronto Maple Leafs tied the Boston Bruins in the series last night. We're one and one. We haven't beat Boston since 1959, so this is important. On the other hand, I'm going to be introducing to you to some people from L.A. and uh, just saying the Oilers from Edmonton crushed you guys last night, 7-4. to four. And unfortunately, Deborah, the <laughs> Red Wings are not in the playoffs this year, but ah. we're, we're getting closer. Um, so in Toronto, as I mentioned, I'm a radio TV personality, and I love having a bit of fun when we're doing these um, webinars. So um, I'm going to be guiding you throughout the next half hour to 45 minutes um, through some questions that you'll be able to participate with online. And then we're going to look at those results. And then our panel is going to comment on those results. So let's meet our panel right now. Steve Delgado from Simtrax. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, uh, I'm Steve Legado from Simtrax. You know, we are a data and document management company. I've been at this company for seven years. So I have seen, you know, a lot of our customers move from doing a lot of stuff manual to mostly automation with with our assistance. Um, but, you know, when I'm not working, I always love to go and maybe go out dancing, go out and have some fun with my with my kid. And um, yeah. I like the personal touch. You're a dancer. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it. You know, I love going Saturday nights, going to go salsa dancing or bachata whenever I can. All right. Well, let's stay on the West Coast in California. Go over to Simtrack. This is David Ibera Martin. Thank you, Rob. Pleasure to be here, everybody. My name's, uh, yeah, David Ibarra. And uh, yeah, so basically, um, my I am also a data and document management uh, solutions consultant at Simtrex, same as uh, Steve. And uh, like Steve, I, I like dancing. I just happen to not be very good at it, right? But uh, ultimately, yeah, I, you know, personal flair. I had a background in computer science and user UIs, yeah, UX, user experience. And, you know, I chose to work here at Simtrex because I really believe that they have a great ability to really connect with the user base with uh, fast and fluid uh, just solutions. And I just love being here. All right. I'm moving over to Detroit, where I believe the weather is probably similar because we're right along the same path. <laughs> Deborah R. Richardson, who is also part of Eiffel, and uh, she just has a wealth of knowledge in this industry, including fraud. Deborah, how are you doing today? I am doing great. And yes, we are going to be 63 degrees, which I think Fahrenheit, that's a little bit higher than your 13 degrees uh, Celsius, but still <laughs> all in the in the same thing. We're, we're definitely not California weather. We'll put it that way. Um, but okay. I am a, a certified fraud examiner. I've been in the AP P2P space for um, a little over 20 years. I really focus on vendor setup and maintenance. Uh, and I really talk about about how to avoid fraud, how to avoid fines, um, staying in compliance, and just avoiding overall bad data in your accounting system and, uh, and ERP. So I work as a uh, trainer at uh, Eiffel and as well as a consultant and uh, speaker. So hope to see anyone on uh, at a future in-person conference. They're coming up. <laughs> And for everybody joining us, uh, this is being taped, as you probably know, so um, you'll be able to uh, get a copy of this later on as Tracy um, kind of edits things and puts it together. All right, let's get moving. I'm just going to wait for the screen to pop up. We're going to get into this. Uh, we'll have three questions, and then we'll go th throughout the panel to find those answers. And I'm just waiting for the... Here we go. So today, as I mentioned, we are going to have three questions. And this first question is pretty simple. How do you receive your electronic invoices? Please click one of these. Is it a single centralized mailbox directly to an invoice receipt portal or to multiple team member mailboxes? So click one of those and we're going to get the results in just a moment. Uh, Steve, you said you're a dancer. You're in California. 
Uh, are you yeah. a hockey fan or are you more just uh, salsa dancing around? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm I'm more into sports when, you know, things are in the finals. So, you know, I'll, oh, I'll watch the Kings play. You're jumping on the wagon, are you? Yeah, I, I guess, you know, I, I just enjoy having a good time with everybody else. I'm not, I don't really follow too much sports. I mean, I do see basketball, baseball here and there. Uh, but yeah, I'm more into like going into the parks and going to see what activities they have or, you know, night markets, things, things of those natures. And so what's the weather now in Cali right today? Yeah, actually, we have very gloomy weather. We recently had high weather, like high in the 80s, 90s. It already feels like summertime here. Today, however, it feels like it's like Deborah said, about 67, maybe, you know, 69 or so or 68. Just a couple of degrees higher. All right. Yeah, Here's exactly. Answers. So 63% of you said you're using single centralized mailboxes, zero directly to an invoice receipt portal, and 37% to multiple team member mailboxes. Steve, why don't you talk about those numbers real quick? Single centralized mailboxes is winning the race with 63%. Yeah, I mean, so I, th I think when, when I've seen, um, at least from these numbers, a lot of, a lot of, uh, companies use single centralized mailboxes, like for instance, their accounts payable. A lot of invoices go to this specific invoices. And then from there, you know, it really depends on the company and their policy, how they like to handle it, whether, you know, they have a team of three people looking at that uh, mailbox. And then from there deciding, you know, who gets to choose what. Um, or if there is some sort of system in the background that handles those invoices and takes that to the to the next step. Um, yeah, and so, I mean, that kind of touches upon that same multiple team member mailbox. Again, you know, this maybe one single centralized mailbox can be, uh, can be viewed by multiple team members. And, you know, in that fashion, again, just continue on with that second pro process of their policy, obtaining the invoice, and now what do we do with it, right? David, do you find those numbers alarming in any way, or is that kind of the the norm? I mean, yes and yes, it is alarming, but it also is the norm, right? Uh, and the reason why I believe that it's alarming is because um, while I absolutely do think that, you know, simplicity uh, can be beneficial and I mean, what's simpler than, you know, the tried and true system of receiving mail via an email inbox, right? It's essentially cutting out and uh, doing the next best thing to how we used to do things, right? Receiving it directly via the post office, directly via the mail. But um, it is alarming in the sense that uh, there is and there can be, especially when it comes to multiple people, multiple mailboxes, uh, the more you uh, kind of split the responsibility. And you probably saw this when you were in school, right? When you were kind of doing group projects, you would assign and you would delegate, oh, this person's going to do this, this person's going to do that. Ultimately, what's going to end up happening, and I'm not saying it happens with everybody, maybe, you know, some of our audience members have a really good system and where that just doesn't happen. But, you know, sometimes stuff falls through the cracks and somebody marks something as read or unread. And then the others think, okay, well, so-and-so is handling it. And the next thing you know, you have a an invoice that hasn't even been touched and it's been 20 days, you know? So um, not completely surprised by the numbers, but it, it, it ultimately can be uh, a little alarming to, to know that uh, that's still kind of what's taking place. Deborah, what do you think? So it's, it's not surprising at all, but what I will say is those 37% that have what's probably a distribution email. So it's probably going to an AP at whatever company.com, but it's being distributed to multiple team members. So just like David said, right, it can cause some issues. So those 37% really need to get it to a centralized uh, email inbox. So it's all coming in one and everyone's working from the same inbox. However, I recommend that they then all move to a collaboration portal. And that is just because email, as we know, is just so risky um, with fraud, um, social engineering scams, right, that come through uh, and 
really having the uh, risk of clicking on a phishing email or, you know, having to deal with a fraudulent, e uh, fraudulent invoice or a fraudulent request to change remittance details. All of that happens in email, not to mention the fact that now you have to deal with um, handling and processing those invoices uh, via in uh, email. And I have been there, right, color coded to death, right, the emails. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, something that that uh, is just a very manual process and there are issues that can go wrong with it. With that, not to mention the fact what I also see is that a lot of um, centralized email boxes handle both invoices and vendor uh, supporting documents, which means that now you have everybody that can see can, uh, what could be vendor sensitive, e uh, vendor sensitive uh, information that are included on those documents like W9, or their banking information. So, you know, I, I, I get the, the emails. I've been there. I done, I've done that. If you're uh, those that have that, you know, distribution email going to multiple team members, really move that to a centralized email box. But really the, the goal is to uh, move that to a collaboration portal so you avoid the fraud that is just inherent in email. Safe to say the more eyeballs on these situations, the better, because then other people can catch them. Correct. All right. Interesting. Okay, let's move to our next question. So again, we'll ask you to click one of these. How does your AP function analyze and input invoice data? Select one again, please. Mainly manual data checks and input. OCR for scanning them manual check. AI is used for extracting data and checking for anomalies. So please click one of those. And while we're waiting, let's go over to David. So David, uh, have you always lived in California? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, I think I've been very blessed. Uh, I think I think that's kind of the case with a lot of uh, people that uh, kind of are born and raised in California. They don't. They tend to like not leave if they can avoid it. And uh, I mean, as of now, yeah, I've I've been here. Uh, all 26 years of my life and oh, you know really I, you had to throw yeah. that in there right uh, oh snap <laughs> sorry <Poppy>. um <laughs> yeah I, i'm just trying i'm just trying to prove the point right that i mean who knows where where i end up in the future but uh for now absolutely yeah definitely uh love the the south the south bay as we call it down here and um i mean i've been told sure. that you I'm sorry. You no, surf? no, I, I missed out on that class. We did have a surfing <laughs> class, but you know, I just, I, I, I preferred my mathematics, and so yeah, kind of missed like out it. on that one. I like it. All right. So, as the results come in, we'll go through the panel again. So we're looking at fifty-seven percent, mainly manual data checks and inputs. Uh, Twenty-nine percent of the OCR for scanning them manually, and AI is used for extracting. So it seems. You know, we've been doing these webinars for some time and AI is starting to um, mm -hmm. increase in numbers. What's your thoughts on that, Steve? Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of where we're heading just in general. Like it's not just invoicing, right? I mean, it's in your daily lives. Now you have what uh, Gemini from Google that helps you just search whatever you want. Same thing with Facebook. Uh, but getting back to the point, I mean, I think that number is just going to get larger, right? The AI number of people using AI to run invoices, uh, purchase orders, scan the documents, um, it's just going to get, it's just going to get bigger because it really takes off, it really takes out the manual tasks of you having to, you know, scan your own, you, you know, using your own eyeball to scan and with me with my glasses you know maybe i have to adjust i have to make sure it's on my contacts are on whatever the case is i have to make sure that all that information is there if i have another invoice it not all invoices look the same so you know you have to take a look at them one by one while ai will help you just grab the important details that you need like the the invoice total, the purchase order number, uh, the vendor information, banking information, you know, all of these things that, you know, kind of Deborah mentioned, um, AI can help you review all of that data before it even goes to that next step. So, I mean, I think it's, it's a wonderful thing that's helping humans just make our lives easier. It makes us just review things rather than just be, you know, typing in numbers and kind of, you know, I'll just keep it at that. 
David, manual processing had the highest numbers there. Uh, people still aren't switching to AI. Do you think it's because of lack of education or they're worried, they're scared, it's something new, unfamiliar? I mean, all of the above, probably. I think I think uh, ultimately it's not up to a lot of the end users to decide what it is that, you know, how businesses are run. I know a lot of times people come in and they have a lot of ideas as to how to innovate and modernize. And, um, you know, a lot of young blood wants to modernize, but, you know, the old guard will say, hey, you know, this is how we do things. This is, you don't know, the, the realities of running a business. And ultimately, I um, what we've seen uh, is as we work with uh, customers is the ability to uh, modernize and kind of show them, you know, I think it's just a matter of perspective and and showing them the possibility. I think AI can be scary, uh, especially uh, like in the news and with pop culture, right? AI, Terminator, okay. whatever. Um, but ultimately it's AI can be, I think to make it, uh, put it into perspective a little bit, it should be considered as like the next step in the same way that OCR uh, was adopted and kind of, uh, became the norm in the 1970s and 80s. I mean, that's, it's going to be the same with AI. AI is brand new and it's, but it's going to be the norm. You know, it's just a matter of time. 20 years from now, it'll, it'll be the new OCR, right? It'll be the new way of doing things. Debra, we know in past conversations that AI um, helps with, uh, you know, knocking down fraudsters. Yeah, what I really like about it is that um, so you don't have to rely on seeing, right, that change or seeing, you know, different banking or remittance information on an invoice. Uh, AI can look at that invoice and identify, right, whether it's coming from the same email address as before or a different email address. So now that could be a red flag that it's a fraudulent invoice. Not to mention, right, it can and identify whether or not the information, uh, vendor information on the invoice as compared to the information in your accounting system or ERP is the same. And so that can be a red flag um, for fraud, but not just for fraud. It can also uh, alert you to the fact that, yeah, maybe the vendor did make a change and didn't tell you. So now you're getting in front of what would be, if you didn't catch it, right, a fraudulent payment that now you have to go back and void and do a lot of rework to get the updated information and reissue that payment. So it can do a lot to avoid um, not just fraud, but also um, uh, unsuccessful payments from vendors that don't think to tell you, right, that their information has changed. Or maybe they did think to tell someone, but they told the internal team member and then it just never got the AP. That happens all the time. Yeah, I think I think you're absolutely correct, Deborah. And maybe I kind of am interjecting. I do apologize, Rob, but no, no. I think oh. AI is is you know it takes into account the context. You know, it, in the same way that a human has the ability to look at the context, um, it different it differs from OCR uh, because it's looking at everything and takes everything into account the same way that we do, but just at a faster you know, and it doesn't get tired. <laughs> yeah. And if you think about the volume of invoices that we are all looking at, it's just harder to spot. Absolutely. Interesting. Thank you, guys. All right, let's get to our last question. Which do you feel is the biggest risk for your AP function? Again, please choose one. Unauthorized vendor detail changes or manual data entry errors or finally duplicate payments. So very interesting answers here to choose from. Deborah. You're in Detroit, but you've traveled the world spreading the word on fraud. So many things, you know, we've had so many discussions and some of the numbers are astronomical in terms of companies losing money because of these fraudsters. That is true. And I just want to say, though, that when we hear about it in the uh, media or press releases, it's all about the millions and millions, right? But it's not. The fraudsters are really going after um, those lower amounts. So, you know, if you're uh, an attendee here and you're thinking, well, they're not after my, you know, $100,000 payment or whatever, the, the latest uh, report from the FBI um, is that uh, business email 
final compromise, the average loss in 2023 was $137,000, which means they had some losses that were lower than that, which means that all companies of all sizes are at risk for fraud. It, it's crazy. It's happening every minute of the day. Yes. All right, let's get to our answer. So again, that question, which do you feel is the biggest risk for your AP function? 52% was our largest number of manual data entry errors and a tie for second was unauthorized vendor detail changes and duplicate payments. Manual data entry errors. Steve, that's where it's at here. Yeah, I mean, I think I think just, you know, Syntrax, since I've been here with Syntrax for so long, I've seen this issue just come up, not only just with AP, but I mean, I think all around where, you know, that manual data entry is one of the biggest key factors in helping a company move to automation, really. Um, you know, there's going to be an issue where somebody gets tired, right? You know, they're doing a bunch of manual data entry. Um, their whole day is really just, you know, taking an invo a bunch of invoices and putting it into their system. And so, you know, of course, they're going to make a mistake here. Maybe they'll miss a comma when it should have been uh, a, a zero or something. You know, they're, they're just going to miss a comma, a, a, a decimal point, Maybe they'll add an additional zero by accident. You know, these things do happen. And I, I think in, in all of these three categories, you know, Simtrax just really helps a bit by bit, right? AP automation, of course, is, um, you know, has a lot of, a lot of points that can, um, that might be daunting for a company to, say, hey, I want to automate the invo the reception of the invoices. I want to automate being able to grab all of the data. And I want to, you know, automate what the manual data entry is. So, you know, we help all along the steps. We don't have to do it all in one. We can just do it uh, little by little. And I mean, I do see here that, you know, same thing with duplicate payments and unauthorized vendor detail changes. These are data entry errors regardless, right? Because there's different vendor details um, and somebody's going to come and try and input this into their systems, may maybe unknowingly, right? Um, because it's also hard for them to keep track of. Maybe they have a hundred companies that they're, that they're running their invoices with. And so, you know, keeping track of all of the vendor details isn't, you know, it, it's very hard to keep track of for sure. Same thing with duplicate payments, right? Maybe you've worked on an invoice today that same invoice comes tomorrow, but you know, you don't, maybe you don't, because you've run a hundred invoices in a day yourself, you know, it's going to have, it's going to be hard to keep track of that duplicate payment. So, I mean, I see all of these as big risks, but of course, manual data entry is, is just the biggest one because it's just human error, of course. Human error, David, like maybe you were out salsa dancing that night before, <laughs> and you know, you're a little tired the next day. And bang, yeah. here you go. So you've got vendor detail changes and duplicate payments tied for second as well. So this again, looks like they're pushing to AI. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when I saw this distribution, I mean, I, I, I basically felt the same way because I was trying to put myself in the shoes, which one would matter most to me. And I mean, it's, it's difficult. It's a difficult choice. So I don't think any of these are are incorrect. I think uh, ultimately, as Steve like rightfully pointed out, they it, it, it all kind of stems from the same place where it's just the the labor can be intense. Uh, having to check all of these, you know, there's a bunch of different uh, points at which one can fail, and so it's important to ultimately get a system, uh, you know, a solution or uh, that is able to basically make sure that all three of these are and more are taken care of and that's where a lot of automation can uh help not with um what's it called touchless ap i don't think um touchless ap is the way to go i think straight through processing right i think you need to have an ap team that can basically increase the amount of invoices that are processed straight through with less uh lag and yeah remember your thoughts yeah, so I I think some of these are just connected, right? So we've got yeah. the the highest with the manual data entry errors, but that can also lead to duplicate payments, right? Um, because we've been there when that manual data entry, right, um, that results in a duplicate invoice just 
you know, ends up being a dash one or a dash a or, mm-hmm. or whatever, just yeah. to get the invoice to, to post. Cause it's the right invoice and definitely not a duplicate, but oh yes, is it, it is a duplicate, right? And duplicate payments in themselves can be right. A data entry error, or it could be an indicator uh, of fraud. So definitely duplicate payments uh, really is an issue, but eliminating those manual data entries goes a long way to avoiding duplicate payments and really to uh, also avoiding unsuccessful vendor payments too. I know we talked about or the uh, response here is unauthorized vendor detail changes, but there are manual, right, um, uh, manual changes to vendor data mm-hmm. that is just a fat finger, right, resulting in uh, unsuccessful payments. So what we really want to do is make sure we're getting that information out of email and then also making sure that that information information is updated in the accounting system or ERP uh, on an automated basis so that you don't run into this, these manual uh, data entry uh, errors, which could result in duplicate payments and right, uh, bad, vendor, uh, bad vendor information. Um, also, with the automation, we don't talk about it a lot, uh, probably not enough, but internal fraud, right, is always uh, a risk as well. And once you automate, right, the ability to then create invoices by these internal fraudsters um, uh, goes down. So that potential reduces uh, because now those invoices must go through that automated process. So an internal fraudster should not be able to create an invoice uh, in the system or bypass approval. So lots of things that you can avoid um, really by automating um, the collaboration and integration um, with the AP system versus manual data entry. And you so, did touch on a point. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, David. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. And and Deborah, you did touch on a point that um, you know, we, we've been talking a lot about automation and automation, but ultimately, uh, collaboration is really where it's at, right? I think oftentimes there's a sense of ownership, and there's a sense of, oh, okay, no, I I need to take care of this, and you know, this is my, but you know, it's a team. And so I think um, a platform like ours really does help with the collaboration aspect, which is to say, hey. Uh, I need to send this out to somebody else. And uh, luckily there's a like a list of requests that I can send and the ability to automate that in and of itself, the automation of receiving requests, completing them and then sending them to the next person. And that really is another big uh, piece that we have found helps our customers kind of turn net 30s into net 15s or even net seven, you know? Deborah, it's funny yeah. because you read my mind. I wanted to <laughs> talk about internal fraud briefly because aside from, you know, watching somebody pull up in a brand new car every other month, <laughs> are there helpful hints in, you know, detecting internal fraud? Uh, so uh, the uh, Association of Certified Fraud Examiners, every two years, they do a report called the Report to the Nations, and it's all on occupational fraud. And 2024 is the se- uh, is one of the two years. So they just came out with their report probably about a month ago, and they have an and I can't remember them all, Rob, but they have uh, an infographic or just within the report of eight behavioral red flags of internal frosters and pulling up in the newest car is one of them. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not how they put it, but it's the lifestyle change. But you you never, mm-hmm. um, um, well, maybe you won't be surprised to hear that that gets missed a lot. And so I would... Uh, uh, recommend uh, anyone on right listening to this on demand that you definitely check out the report to the nations and you check out the uh, infographics that they have and all of the uh, information that can uh, help you identify a uh, an internal froster. Uh, there are eight behavioral red flags and living above one's means is one of them, but that's also the one that gets missed the most. Deborah, with internal fraudsters, um, I, I, I believe an audit trail, you know, an audit trail would kind of be the way to go, right? Just having sort of an automated system that audits everything would kind of eliminate that because you're ultimately able to find it. 
Absolutely. And one of the things that um, the ACFE uh, says is that the biggest weakness is internal controls. And so if you have manual internal controls, you're relying on mm -hmm. those uh, things to be done. And that is one of the biggest reasons why uh, they say that uh, fraud happens is because those things don't happen. And so if you automate them, it happens. They're going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Really, really interesting. Steve, any final thoughts on at the topic at hand? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, just to kind of cover all the points that we talked about, um, you know, automating AP, again, is just a very daunting point, whether that's a basic step, like, you know, handling the invoices, um, whether it's what do we do well, now that we have the invoice, you know, what do we do with this? I have to look at that policy. Can we use AI or OCR? to um to be able to grab this data and then lastly you know the automation of of the integration part um you know it can be very daunting any of these points so you know simtrax can always help with any of these points um we, we always say hey you know let's uh I, I think the best part if you're looking to automate ap is to start at the you know doing something small so why not if you haven't done so already you're still maybe doing physical copies of invoice uh, handling, you know, why don't you start off with digitizing that process or automating that um, invoice handling and then get to that second step of, okay, now we have the invoice, what do we do? So, you know, doing piece by piece, I think is a takeaway, right? You don't have to do everything all at once. Start off with either what's something that's easy to do or maybe something that's, you know, very critical at hand that you have to, you have to do. It's mandated to do by your, by your company. Maybe the biggest risk. Sorry, Rob. Yeah. Like I just kind of wanted to piggyback and say maybe like the, ultimately the, the first thing that you probably want to automate is what you feel is the biggest risk for your AP function. So however you responded right to that third poll question, whether it's the unauthorized vendor detail changes, the manual data entry errors or the duplicate payments, um, you know, just kind of focus on that and uh, kind of, you know, make sure to see what there is, um, see what can be done. And you, you'd be surprised by how, how simple um, some of these solutions can really be. Deborah, final thoughts? Yeah, so really the bottom line from the uh, AP team member perspective, right, automating the submission um, and handling of invoices along with extracting uh, vendor information needed for, you know, invoice matching and payments, um, as well as integrating with your accounting system or ERP um, just creates a collaboration that you just cannot get get out of email uh, and with uh, the related manual processes. Um, but also it upskills our AP team members from manual processing, right, that includes data entry to reviewing for auditing, because at that point, you're looking at exceptions only. So you're going from data entry to auditors. And that's what I like. Excellent. Well, thank you, panelists, Steve. Appreciate your time. I'll look for you on TikTok, Dancing Salsa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> David, I appreciate that 70s and 80s reference as a 26-year-old. That means you've done oh, some research. <laughs> that's all. That's exactly what it means. Yep. I love it. And Deborah, a pleasure always. Um, hopefully the Red Wings, because they just missed the playoffs this year. Hopefully yeah. next year we'll see you in the playoffs. Again, gang, I appreciate your time. This is tape. You'll be sent a copy of this. And I leave you with a few words of wisdom. All right. If your house is cold, just stand in the corner. It's always 90 degrees. Okay. There you go. I'll <laughs> yeah. take that one. That's a good one. I'll take that one to Detroit. <laughs> I love it. That's a good one. Use that one all day. I'm Rob Pagetto. <laughs> Thank you to Eiffel. And we'll be in touch. And keep an eye out for future webinars because obviously they're very educational. And we've always got a great panel. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, guys. Thank you everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.